for the next video on the Innocent Central Electric Car Conversion. My name is Jose Barriga, uh, videos in TampaElectricCar.com. And I thought I was going to do the final video on the last video, but it turns out I make it good improvement. The first one, and it's an important one, I'm trying to replace the hydraulic uh, power steering uh, pump on the car with an electric one. And that's because it works fine, but it's uh, a little noisy. And the uh, idea or the one of the benefits of an electric car is that it's uh, supposed to be silent. So I'm replacing the hydraulic power steering pump from a MR, uh, Toyota MR2 with the uh, electric power steering that attaches at the, at the stair wheel at the counter. And this is from uh, Saturn View 2006. And basically the way to do this is you have to get one of these, either an Evade or the John chart, and uh, then get one of these uh, controllers that you can buy on epowersteering.com. E and you can either buy the motor there or a few other components to attach this, or you just buy the controller. In my case, it's much cheaper to buy just the controller. And then install it, it has instructions by the way. It comes with uh, some nice instructions on how to wear this and it's compatible with several models of uh, electric power steering from several cars one is Pontiac Torrent uh, another is the Chevrolet Equinox this is uh, certain views just from a few years the list is in the website or they can help you to, de to determine what uh, power steering uh, electric motors can uh, fit or match with the controllers uh, there's another um, Saturn Ion a few models of Saturn Ion as, uh, work as well so the first thing I'm doing is I'm testing the uh, uh, power steering motor and the controller together just to make sure that they work if I don't want to you know cut my power my, my, my shaft in my car and then find out that this doesn't work uh, when I already cut my car so um, what I did is this is really simple this control unit just has uh, six cables to work connected to a potentiometer which is used to uh, change the level of assistance that you get all the way to the left is no assistance all the way to the right is maximum assistance and you have a lot of uh, settings in between uh, two of the other cables are uh, need to be linked to the two cables coming to the uh, controller box which is this and then the two final are just uh, connected to battery power this usually goes to ignition. I just connected it to a positive constant for testing purposes. It's supposed to go to ignition. And then I have a couple of uh, uh, tools here just to tell me when I am getting uh, assistance or not. So we're going to do this when the pump or the motor is working. Since I uh, just doing a quick test, I just gonna install the uh, power into my tractor here. I'm just gonna uh, connect it into the tractor. And after you connect, you can hear a little click from one of these and this. That means it's working. And uh, I'm just going to turn the knob to the right for maximum assistance. And I can you can hear a click from the controller. That means it's working. This is the side that goes to the wheel, or yeah, to the to the steering wheel. And this is the side that goes to the rack. And when I start testing, you can tell that this is uh, giving me assistance. When I try to turn this, this gives me extra, extra power, you know? So uh, that's how I can, that's how I can tell that it's working. So it, it's, this will work working condition. So what I'm going to do now is proceed to, to start installing in the car. I'll show more about that when I, once I do that. Thank you. Hello, I just uh, received my they sent me a battery back and I'm very excited uh, I'm going to start opening and make sure that it's uh, working properly. Uh, and I'll show you once I open the uh, cover and see what's inside. Yeah. Hello, well, I'm trying here to open my uh, new package. Um, fortunately, this is glued together. There's a very thick glue here. Uh, so the only way to uh, really remove this glue is to um, cut it so that's what I'm doing with this uh, electric saw this goes here actually and I'm uh, going through uh, the cutting process 
So um, I'll let you see once I open the patch. Well, there you have it. That's the uh, battery patch with no uh, no cover. Uh, and I've been measuring several of the cells and the voltage seems to be okay. So I think we are going to be good. You know, I've been uh, measuring some of these cells. Um, I think we are good. They, I measure for random. Sorry about the shaky video, it's just me filming today. There you go. Uh, so we, we do have voltage and it's not too low. There's no reason to think that the, di the cells are damaged. They look, they look fine. Now next step is to disassemble everything and get the cells out. Show you more when I do that. Well, uh, here I am continuing working on the um, battery, or the Nissan Leaf, and uh, I can identify a few components. Uh, it seems to be the precharge resistor, and these are the uh, two of the contactors. Um, for the most part, the terminals for the batteries are well covered, so it's safer to work on this, even though it's just I'm being careful with my gloves. Um, what I did first is uh, remove all the stuff that is in the top, especially the connections between batteries, so I can reduce the voltage between each one of the models, and uh, that should make it easier or safer to work with. Um, then there's a few things that I uh, um, I'm trying to identify. This is uh, obviously a fuse, and this is the. Uh, emergency disconnect that was in the top of the battery so I keep the I keep disassembling these these things. Um now uh, I'm not sure what these are. These were in the top of the uh batteries and they seem to have a um plate under this. Um this probably is a fire sensor I guess anyway we wouldn't be needing that so these are the connectors between the modules um, this was there also, and I'm not sure what this is. Uh, check it out later online, see if I can figure out what this is. Anyway, what we really need is the, uh, our batteries. And that's, uh, I'm going to keep working on getting them out of the uh, chassis right now. And, um, uh, testing each one of the batteries. So far I tested this side of the batteries and they are good. Um, I'm going to work on that one next. Almost there. I have two of the smaller packs out. I've already tested all these batteries and they're good. Um, I'm just working on the last one. I have an engine hoist that made the work much easier. This is heavy, very heavy. Um, almost there, now I need to get them out and start separating batteries individually. Hey, I'm back with the uh, Nissan Leaf batteries and I put them all together uh, next to the car. I pretty much just put them, you know, hold them together with the rod, one of the original rods that came here. So um, they're just held together by a rod, um, one in each corner. And then um, I proceeded to connect them as they are going to be connected in the car, which is uh, three in uh, parallel and then connected in series to the next three on the on positive side now, and then three on the negative side, making these three parallel, connected in series to the next uh, three. So uh, these have an original voltage of two, uh, 340 volts, but uh, since they're connected like this, they are like 125 volts, and that's how they're going to be connected in the car. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do now is uh, connect them through here to the car charger and charge them and see how much they, how many upper hours they can take. That will give me a very good idea of how good or bad these cells are. Um, if I take a multimeter between these two, um, these two terminals, I see the 126 volts. So I'm going to charge into 132.5 volts, which is the, the uh, 
the charge that I put in this car and the other similar batteries and then I'll compare uh, the ampere hours that it's putting in uh, of course these uh, these two are being, uh, are being held together with this cable from one side to the other and I'm going to uh, put a cable through this part this this is where the uh, charger ends through this cable so I'm just going to disconnect the charger and connect it to those batteries and see how they go um, I measure and it looks like I can put like 32 batteries here um, in this part and in this part and then I probably need to put uh, 10 batteries in the back and the trunk which is I think is what I'm going to do um, these batteries do not make that much volume once they are the original casing uh, these are uh, more compact than other cells like the cow and as you can see these are cells that are second generation Nissan Leaf cells the first generation had all these terminals colored like black and red and this one has only the top very top part colored and the first generation had this old seal well this has uh, ventilation these are the batteries known as lizard which supposed to uh, work better in high temperature places my guess is that this is the same chemistry as the other ones they just have more ventilation more uh, uh, open spaces for the air to circulate I don't think these are uh, any other chemistry but I don't know for sure um, still this should work okay um, also I removed the battery uh, I mean the front uh, bumper because it needs repainting and now that the bumper is out you can see the compressor for the air conditioning and the one right below is the controller um, that's uh, that's the air AC compressor and that's the condenser uh, there are a few things that I need to do for example I need to close these spaces they they get they let the water go inside so I need to cover these spaces uh, probably going to relocate this these horns also they seem to get some water there and when it rains they fail a little bit um, other than that that's uh, my next uh, step is to test the batteries and the charging I'm going to be also repainting the front bumper as you can see it's quite bad I don't know why Hi. it's a few days later and uh, I made some good progress so I um, guess I will show you the, the batteries are good I just covered them till I'm ready to put them back in the car they're they're good uh, let me show you what I'm working on um, this is the uh, front bumper it's really you know the paint is scratch off I did a few uh, painting uh, test here and what I'm doing is I'm gonna cover the uh, front uh, grill a little bit it, I don't need that much air in now so just for the uh, air conditioning so I'm uh, fixing this to sand and then cover completely uh, this partial paint uh, what I use is foam foam is great to fill up uh, big gaps and then I'm going to use this uh, body filler that uh, you can get on car parts uh, this is what I'm going to do hopefully I'll be able to do it properly so it doesn't show once it's, once it's painted um, on the front I'm doing a few things I'm going to make my uh, I'm going to make my uh, cover um, the plastic box for the connections uh, this is going to go here and I'm going to put the uh, connection there electric connections because now I'm going to have two batteries and they're going to meet in this point at that place uh, the place for the uh, batteries has been cleared up I have now um, covered the front holes that were here and uh, made this waterproof so uh, as you can see this is the place where the batteries are going to be now um, these are um, the, the, this is splash proof so it's uh, it's good and what I did is I removed the horn over this place this is a little better than what it was um, and I moved the um, fans here the, the uh, little radiator this is where it's going to go now it's gonna get fresher air so I think it's gonna be better 
I put a little switch here that I can use for testing even though it's automatically turned on by the uh, controller I use this to, to test it and I think it's going to work much better there the pump is here, it's a little pump uh, it's not just a little PC pump but it's uh, that's the way it works in the, the system is screwing the controller now uh, that's what I'm doing, what I am uh, need to do next is uh, just finish the front bumper, put it back and then start using the car while I install the second set of batteries more to come hey well um, I'm here working on the uh, bumper and I'm just using some of this body filler and sander uh, this is what I'm doing now with the um, front bumper I have to do it outside because it's uh, there's a lot of dust flying uh, this is how it was originally it's covered the uh, foam and like you can see now uh, that's the uh, almost final results. I still need to sand a little and it has a few imperfections that I need to fix. And after that, um, I think it'll be ready for painting. Well, um, it like, uh, looks like I'm done with the uh, coverings and it's ready for painting. Uh, let's see how I do with the painting. Um, that's how it's gonna look like once I'm finished. I'm going to start painting now. Okay, so I'm done with the front bumper. That's how it looks like once it's finished. Uh, that's how it, uh, the partial covers look like. So I'm uh, very happy with the results. It looks uh, good. And uh, all the rest of the work is done. Now I'm uh, moving to preparing for the uh, new set of batteries. Uh, I'll show more after. Okay, I'm back working on the Sentra and I'm working on a junction box. Uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm creating a junction box just to be able to connect the two batteries. The second battery for the second pack of Nissan Leaf is going to come here and it's going to connect here. Uh, I'm using this uh, amp meter uh, to, as, a, as a connection as well for, for the um, the cables so I'm gonna use that too and then um, I have that's that's going to be the negative this is going to be the positive side uh, as well the, the uh, other battery pack is going to come through here and connect through here um, once this is done um, this just uh, I just have this cover this just locks in here and then this locks in here properly and there it goes and that's how it's going to look like uh, now I will have some uh, my next thing to do is actually uh, start installing batteries in this space um, I also had this fan somewhere not being really used so I put them in the top of the controller for extra cooling I have one here and one in the front which I had to remove to rewire this uh, this these cables but I, I'll put it back uh, and then I'll start just installing batteries I'm ready to start installing batteries more to come